We're in week seven on a series entitled How to Receive Your Healing. But if you'll notice in this series, we are talking about major principles on receiving anything through faith. So it works the same way. The same way you got saved is the same way that you lay hold of everything that God's provided for you. So, and he's provided a lot for us. So in relation to healing, he's provided healing, right? He is your healer. In relationship of finances, he is your provider. He is your source of supply. In relation to spiritual life, he is our life, right? He's our everything. So we've been talking about, you know, some, some principles, the foundation being you, you literally receive through faith everything God has given you by his grace, right? Everything that God has given us, it came to us through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ, and now all of the blessings of God, all of the power of God, everything is locked up in Christ. Everything is locked up in Christ, right? It's all there. Healing, provision, soundness of mind, freedom, I mean, victory, all this stuff is locked up. In the Greek tense, in the epistles, it's always in the locative tense. All this stuff is, is locked up in Christ. So now I must receive through faith what God has given me by his grace, right? Right? He gave me salvation, and in the atonement, it includes the healing of your body, right? Spiritual life, right? An, a full and overflowing supply financially, all this stuff. You know, well, I just don't like, I don't believe in that prosperity gospel. Well, that's fine, because you won't ever walk in it. But it won't change the fact, I mean, it's kind of funny. You know, the word gospel means a message that is too good to be true. You know, that's what the Greek word gospel means. But God did everything. He gave us everything by his grace. We couldn't earn it. What is the grace of God? It's God doing for you and I what we could never do for ourselves. I don't deserve it. I couldn't earn it. I can't do enough to get it. I receive everything through faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God it, without faith, it's impossible to receive anything from God. James tells us that, right? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all, lib all men liberally and upbraids him not. But it says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, right? Because he, he basically says the man that wavers is like a man driven with and tossed by the waves. And it says, let not that man think that he'll receive anything from the Lord. It doesn't say, let not that man think that God won't give him, because God already gave you. This is not a matter of God giving you something. It's a matter of you receiving it, and we learn we receive through faith. But then we spent a few weeks talking about a real big issue, that we must live a life yielded to God. I must yield my will to God's will. Well, what does that mean? What is God's will? God's will is his word, right? Faith begins where the will of God is known. For you to be in faith, you have to go to the word of God and say, okay, is what I'm believing God for in here? So if you believe that God will bless one and not another, heal one and not another, if you believe that, you can't have faith. You know, I've said this before, but if I promised everyone who came to this service tonight and sat through the entirety of the service, everyone, now I'm not promising you this, okay? But if I did, <laughs> and I said, okay, and you guys all knew me and you knew me to be a man of my word, if I said, listen, I will give every person who sits through this service $100, a $100 bill, except one person, how many could have faith for that $100 bill? None of you could have faith for it, because how do you know you're not the one? Do you see that? That's why the Bible is, 
it, it, it's so clear. I'm no respecter of persons. James, there's, I'm, there's no variableness in me. That means if I've done something for one person and I won't do it for another, then I'm varying. And God says, there is no variableness in me. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. What I've done for one, I'll do for all. God is the God who would have how many people be saved? All of them. That's his will. Does it say that in the word? And that they would all come to the knowledge of the truth. But how many of you know, since 7 o'clock tonight, do you know there's been a lot of people that have left being on the planet and that went in the planet? They died, they departed from this life, they were not saved, they rejected Christ, and they're now in hell, even though it's God's will that all people be saved. See, we have, to, we have to get our eye on the ball here, right? But we have, see, for us as believers, remember, we're not the performer, we're the believer. If we will find his will, right? 1 John chapter 5, if you ask anything according to my will, I hear you, God says. And if you know that I hear you, whatever you ask, you know that you have the petitions that you've asked of me. So in other words, that's why God's word says all the promises of God are in Christ, yes, and in Christ, amen. Boy, I've mentioned a lot of scriptures that are not really preached because it, it, it's like, well, wait a minute. That doesn't sound right because... I can see situations on the outside that don't line up with that. But we never, we never create doctrine by what happens on the outside. Doctrine comes from what God says. So in your life, you have to yield your, your members. You got to yield your whole life and your flesh hates that. That's why Paul said in Romans 12, Man, you got to throw that sucker on the altar. Present your body a living sacrifice. Could you imagine the revelation it took for Paul to say that? He was a Pharisee. He could literally, he could literally sit down with you in Hebrew and go, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he could literally quote in Hebrew the whole Old Testament, word for word. He could tell you every bit of the law, all the ordinances, all the statutes, all everything. He could tell you everything. He could tell you exactly how to perform every sacrifice. And do you know how many sacrifices in the Old Testament were living sacrifices? None. Right? There's no living sacrifice. Sacrifices were killed on the altar. And now for the first time, Paul is going, listen, I'm begging you, brothers, present your body a living and holy sacrifice. Living. You know it's a living sacrifice, right? Because your flesh, your spirit's going, amen, preacher. Your flesh is going, oh me, that hurts. What do you mean, turn the other cheek? I mean, I get that. Turn the other cheek. Somebody turns your cheek and it's a left hook, right? No, no, no. No, no, you turn him your other cheek. When it says lay hands on them suddenly in the Bible, it's not talking about, it's talk, right? But your flesh is like, hey, I can't believe that guy cut me off. This week, man, there's three young guys in a car, and I turned right on the, from, from Fort to 168th, they changed the lights, and I literally didn't see this little, like, Toyota Corolla, didn't see them. Next thing I know, I've got road rage. I've got three, like, guys in their probably early 20s. They're, they're whipping around me, just trying. I mean, you know, and it's a two-way street. They can't quite get around me. They're honking. They're, they're, you know, they're raising a certain finger at me, you know, and everything. So we get, we get over to the stoplight, and they pull up. And so I pulled around because there was no spot next to him. I pulled around and I rolled my window down. I looked at him and I'm like, guys, I am so sorry. I didn't see you. 
And they went from angry, they're like, oh, it's okay. <laughs> right? It's totally fine. <laughs> they thought, I mean, their reaction was that I totally was out to get them. But then when they found out, listen, guys, I'm so, you know, here I am, I'm just like ob oblivious, right? And I just, I didn't see you. Oh, it's all right. That guy who cut you off the other morning, he's just running late. He doesn't even know you exist, right? That's how come we've got to walk in love. But our flesh doesn't like that. So we've learned that we have to yield, forgive, honor God, put him first. When, when the word says, get out of the boat, when Jesus says, come, and you're sitting here going, I see no way. And yet he says, I make a way where there's no way. That's how come he will work overtime for you to know him so that you can trust him. Right? So we talked about yielding. And then last week we talked about literally walking under the light and under the sound of the word of God. So important as you're believing God. This is how you receive from him. So tonight, I want to give another piece of this. And man, you'll be able to use this in every area of your life. We're living at what, the, what in the Hebrew language as well as the Greek, we're living at the end of days. We're at the end of the church age. Every generation of the church has to live this way, but even more so for us. Satan knows he doesn't have much time left, right? So he's going all out. But bottom line, he's defeated. But you have to learn how to live and be strong in the Lord. This is a big thing in receiving your healing. It's a big thing in receiving everything from God. You have to learn how to be strong in in him Amen. right you have to learn how to be strong in him you know growing up i mean i used to go uh you know this is early 80s you know i used to go watch arnold schwarzenegger and some of these guys lou ferrigno franco colombo i used to go watch them at gold's gym right and uh it, it, it's just just interesting I'd have a gym membership, you know, and, and I'd go in there and work out, but I was really there with my notepad. And I was, I was literally taking notes. I was watching them. And it was funny how these guys would walk. And you still see it today, you know, like they're, they're just got, they walk a certain way, you know, like notice though every time their arm goes back, the tricep, you know, and, and you just... <laughs> And, and now, when you see that, you know, a lot of people try to do that in life right now. They walk around and go, I got this. I'm educated. I got this. You know, I, I, I work in a field that I make pretty good money. I got this. And, and you got to be careful because if you look in the Bible, there's not one scripture in there that says your work is to provide your lifestyle right? Your work provides your seed to give, and your giving will determine your lifestyle. That's what the Bible says. You got you to renew your mind to that, because it's like, whoa, right? We are to walk in this world. See, God has not called you to yield natural fruit. He hasn't called you to do that. He, he hasn't called you to do anything according to your ability. He calls, he calls you to do things with him according to his ability. He doesn't cause you, he doesn't, he hasn't called you in this earth to yield natural fruit. He's called you to yield supernatural, eternal, divine fruit. The Bible says God's path for your life, you can't even see it. Eye hath not seen, ear hath not heard. It's not even entered. It says into the heart, but it's talking about your mind. It's not even entered into the mind of man what those things that God has prepared for those that love him. We can't see our path 
we're utterly dependent upon the Holy Spirit to show it to us. And then when we see it, we're utterly dependent upon him to bring revelation knowledge of his word every day of our life so that his word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our faith or to our path. And then we have to hear his word all the time on the inside because we walk by faith, we don't walk by sight. We walk in the grace of God. Paul said, I am who I am by the grace of God. Everything about you is, is to do things beyond who you are in yourself. So here's a big part of it. You are never to be strong in yourself. You are to be strong in the Lord. So let's talk about this just a little bit. Go to Ephesians. Remember, I said, I've said this so much. Go to Ephesians chapter 6. If the word of God... If this represents God's word, and this represents your circumstances, literally, if, if God's word takes precedent and priority over your circumstances, guess what? Your circumstances will never move you. But if you stop looking at the word, and you start looking at your circumstances, and all of a sudden, the minute it does this, now the word is not going to move you anymore your circumstances will move you. God never, ever, ever wants your circumstances to move you, ever. He wants, he wants you to live and move and have your being in him. Acts 17, 28, it says that. In him, for in him we live and we move and we have our very being. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. It's interesting, we're kind of going through this a little bit on Sunday, talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So it says here, at the end of this letter, that's filled with doctrinal truths, Paul says, finally, my brethren. Now, he's saying, basically in the Greek, it just means, now I'm going to tell you the most important thing I'm going to say. If you don't get anything else, get this. Now to the most important Sit, the most important matter at hand right now, here it is, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Try to live a holy life in your own strength. There's no possible way, right? You got to live it. You got to live and be strong in the Lord. So we got to understand what that means. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And this is the key. Be strong. This is in the commanded tense in the Greek. So this is not a suggestion. Jesus, the head of the church, your Lord, my Lord, is saying, I, I'm commanding you as my child, be strong in the Lord. And this word strong, remember we talked about it Sunday, for those of you who are here. It's the Greek word enduo, okay? Enduo, be strong. Enduo, or I'm sorry, endunamu. I've been living in enduo and endunamu. They're the same, they're from the same root. Endunamu, it literally means to be endued or to be clothed with increasing superhuman strength. It, it doesn't, it, it, see, it doesn't mean, okay, I got to be strong in the Lord. So, okay, here I go. I got to be strong. Okay, I'm going to be strong in the Lord. Brother, you don't even know what you're talking about. Because being strong in the Lord doesn't have to do with you. It has to do with you being clothed by somebody else, by the mighty Holy Spirit. This is why Jesus said, don't leave, don't leave Jerusalem. You go until you be endued with power, until you be clothed with miraculous power that's released. This is telling us, finally, my brethren, you got to be clothed, endued with literally miraculous, increasing, superhuman strength. And be strong in the Lord. In other words, this strength, this, this power, this endowment 
which comes from the Holy Spirit, is only found in the Lord. And every one of us said, thank God that if I'm born again, I'm in the Lord. Because Romans tells us, you are in Christ if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. So if, if, he, if the Holy Spirit is in you, which if you're saved, he's in you. Right? This power is found in him. But you need the Holy Spirit upon you to walk in this power. He has to clothe you. You have to allow it to happen. So we, but we got to know, okay, pastor, okay, I get it. But still, I don't know what that means yet. Right? Unless, unless you do know what that means. If, if you do, then, then that's great. Let's, let's, let's drive this deeper. Because, I mean, I'm telling you, this is unlimited revelation here. God wants you to walk clothed with his power. You, you need to. Right? So let's keep going. Be strong in the Lord and in the power. This word power is kratos. This is demonstrated power. In other words, you could translate this and go, we are to be strong. We're to be endued and clothed with increasing superhuman strength that is found in the Lord. And also, how that shows up on the outside is by kratos, in the power of his might. Now we ha- we've been strengthened inwardly in the Lord, right? By the Holy Spirit, because we're being clothed. Something's happening on the inside as we're clothed on the outside. And what happens is it breaks out of us in kratos power, demonstrated power. It's the kratos power that raised Jesus from the dead. It's the kratos power that's going to heal a body, that's going to change finances, that'll bring restoration, where God demonstrates that's what we're to walk in. And then the power of his might. The word might literally in the Greek means his ability. We are to be strong. We're to be clothed in his strength inwardly, and it's to manifest outwardly And what what is manifesting, we're to walk and do everything according to his ability. I'm telling you, this in this right here, in this area, this is Zoe life. Jesus did everything this way. He was not strong in himself. He laid all that down before he came to this earth. His, his, he, was, he was literally endued with power from the Holy Spirit from on high. We're to live victoriously in this life through God's increasing manifested power, his increasing manifested strength, the part of this word, his increasing manifested dominion and his increasing manifested ability. In other words, the Holy Spirit wants to help bring on the outside who you are and what you've been given on the inside. So when you go to work tomorrow, realize, okay, this is to be a form of worship. Lord, teach me how to operate and be strong in you, to always look to you first in your personal life to, as you're believing God for things. You need his strength to walk by faith, to overcome addictions, to get your flesh under, to live in overflow. We need his strength. We've got multitudes of Christians that are just going, they're giving up, right? They went on that, they went on that sin, repent roller coaster. You sin, then you repent, then you sin again and repent, and eventually You just kind of quit and say, well, this is just the way I am. And that's just not true. God made you a world overcomer. And on that, it's really you sin. You have incredible inner turmoil. There's guilt, shame, and condemnation that he's heaping on your head. Then you repent, feel better for a little while, right up until you mess up again. Why are we messing up? Because we don't know who we are, who we've been made. We still think we're our flesh. 
We think we are how we act. Well, I just got an anger problem. Yeah, your flesh does, but your spirit doesn't have an anger problem. Right? Yeah, but I've just been, I've just been wounded. Yeah, you have. And that wound is in your mind. It feels real. It's real. But, but your spirit is not wounded. Jesus has already made you free. And the Bible says, if you continue in my word, John 8, 31, right, and 32, you'll be, you're my disciples indeed, and you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Then it goes down in verse 36, whoever the Son has made free is free. But yet we come to church and we sing all kinds of songs about Jesus setting us free. Right? Do you know why you've been set free? This is why, because you've been made free. Why don't we stick to the word of God? Well, it, it, but it doesn't sound as good in the lyrics of a song. We need to get away from that. I don't know about you, man, when you taste of the anointing, when you do something and you realize, wow, what just happened here could have never happened with just me. What happened here was because he came into my life. And you think, well, come on, I want to be my own person. Oh, you are. You're human. You're a child of God. You're made in his image and likeness. You're not made to do anything alone. Got all these people trying to figure out what they're going to do for their life, and they're trying to do something for themselves and by themselves, and yet God never will call you to do something for yourself or by yourself. Right? So, we, so this is why we got to learn to yield to him. The major reason why we're not walking in these things is because we spend so much time beating ourselves up. This is the way to freedom, guys. Have you ever had God show up and yell at you? No. No, never has. Right? God, he loves you. When you mess up, he loves you just as much. And he doesn't come there slapping you. He, he picks you up and he's like, okay, come on. Just let go of that. I've already paid for that. Let's forget that. Let's move on. Let's keep going. I remember when the Lord told me years and years, now, you know, I'm getting a little older here, yeah. decades and decades ago. Wow, <laughs> that's ridiculous. But anyway, he said, Tony, I don't care where you are. I don't even care where you've been. My question is, will you go from this place with me? And I had to forget those things that were behind me. And the enemy will keep throwing them back at you. You've got to realize, wait a minute, I've been made free. Do you know holiness, your behavior, it flows out of righteousness. So if you don't know you've been made righteous, your behavior is going to be whacked. And you'll live your life beating yourself up all the time. It's not really other people that beat you up. Nobody beats you up more than you do. Right? But man, if we could fix this and learn how to be strong in the Lord. So step number one, to be strong in him, you got to live in him. Right? Acts 17, 28. It's in him that I live and move and have my being. I have to learn how to do that. And the word of God is going to tell us how to do this how to be strong in him, how to live in him. So get ready. Now the clock is going fast, so I'm probably not going to get through all this, but you know, you guys will come back next week, <laughs> right? But we need to get this down. We need to stop playing church and go, you know, okay, yeah, be, I got to be strong in the Lord. Well, let's look at what that means. So we see initially, I have to be clothed and endued with a power from, from God, right? And the mighty Holy Spirit has been sent here for that purpose. And I'm to, I'm to do things 
in, according to his manifest power. On Sunday, we said the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's an inward strengthening that builds a confidence in you so that you know that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. That nothing you will ever face will be bigger than who's on the inside of you. And now that, now that inward strengthening causes this incredible confidence and now you will step into the outward adorning of this Kratos power. And that, that's how we walk. And, we, and, we, and it's found in Christ. So we've got a couple pieces here. Let's keep going. Our weakness is never an issue if we're drawing from his power. Your weakness is not an issue if you're drawing from his power. Your weakness in your own self, becomes a non-issue now. Okay, you've got to know that. That's why the word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's why all things are possible to him who believes. So look at this, now verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. Put on, again now, it's the Greek word enduo right? Put on the whole armor of God. It starts out, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord in verse 10. Be clothed, be endued with power. Verse 11, put on again, be endued with the whole armor of God. Be clothed with the whole armor of God. See, in English, we don't have the English words that really do this. So you get the idea. I mean, we have Christians that they get up in the morning and they're going to put on their armor and they, have, they say this little thing. But do you, I'm not taking off my helmet of salvation tonight. Right? No, I don't need to put that on tomorrow. I, I'm not going to bed without the helmet of salvation. Right? See how silly that stuff is? But when you realize, wait a minute, I have to work with the Holy Spirit. I have to be willing and obedient to put this on. But I can't clothe myself in this. I have to be clothed with the whole armor of God. Which I'll give you a little, this is the whole armor of God. It's revelation knowledge of his word. Revelation knowledge. What does that mean? I make a decision in my life to put his word first place. Right? Right? Could I ever preach without a bottle of water? Had no idea. This is crazy. The bottle of water anointing came upon me when I started this church. So I, met, I put his word first place. I'm meditating in it. What that means, I'm saying it over and over. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ. He always causes me to triumph. He always gives me the victory. Even on the outside, it doesn't look good, but I'm, I've got my eyes, I'm meditating in my heart. Pretty soon, what happens is my spirit man gains revelation knowledge of this word and the Holy Spirit on the inside of me opens it. The entrance, Psalm 119, right? Verse 130, the entrance of his word gives light. When his, light, when his word is opened, light comes. And now I see something. It's a lamp to my feet. It's a light to my path. So now I gain revelation knowledge of his word. And what's happening in that process is as I gain revelation knowledge of his word, I am clothed with the very armor of God, which is, is his word. Okay? So keep, just hang with me on this. This is not an overnight thing. I want to encourage you, about the fifth time you listen to this, you'll start really going, wow, man, that's really good. Right? Because that's the way his word works. Put on the whole armor of God. Don't put on part of it. Yeah, but I really like that book of Revelation stuff. That's great. But put on the whole armor. What do you study? I read my chapter every day. I'm, I, you know, I'm, God planted me in this church. I read one chapter a day minimum. Monday through Friday, I'll read the whole New Testament every year. That's great. 
I also maybe read other things, but I'm listening to teaching. But this is what I'm really doing. I'm looking for the Holy Spirit to lead me so that I could start meditating in some scripture. If you're in a situation that, that's kind of right now, this is the now battle, there will be scriptures. The Holy Spirit is trying to bring you. And you grab those and start meditating on them because you've got to get them in your heart. they got to go from your mind to your heart. Right? Put on the whole armor of God. Why? That you may be able to stand. This Greek word, stand what? Against the wiles of the devil. You have to be endued with something the armor of God, revelation knowledge of his word, so that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Jesus said the enemy, Satan, comes to steal and to kill and destroy, but I have come, I am come, that they might have life and have it more abundantly. He walks around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He knows everything that's worked on your lineage above you, your dad, your mom, Right, your grandmother, your grandfather, your great grandmother, your great grandfather, your great great and great great, and we could keep going. He knows everything that worked on him. He's been playing this game a long time. His power is deception only. He doesn't have any real power because he's been stripped. You're the one with the power. He doesn't want you to ever know it. So it says you literally allow this armor of God to be endued upon you so that you can stand against the wiles of the devil. Well, what does the word stand mean? I'm so glad you asked. This is what it means. It means to survey the battlefield, which denotes that you are in a battle. So all of a sudden, as I'm meditating in Scripture, as the armor is manifesting, as I'm gaining revelation knowledge of the Word of God, it literally lifts me up. Talk to a military person. They always want the high ground. Right? You always have... Why? Because you can see what the, where the enemy's coming. The Holy Spirit wants to lift you up in your life and show you exactly the way it really is. Mountains look gigantic when you're on the ground. But mountains don't look very big when you're at 30,000 feet. Right? Satan is never to sneak up on you. All of a sudden, you will be re you'll get revelation knowledge. You start to be endued with the armor of God. You're strong in him. And all of a sudden, you'll see, oh, wow. I've been focused over here, but he's coming this way. And I could see it, right? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against, against, all right? So against literally means face to face, right? Stand against the wiles of the devil. Stand against. Now, so this is pros. Maybe we should demonstrate that, all right? So pros is face to face. That means I'm face to face. The enemy is never going to sneak up. So this is pros. God always wants me to be face to face with my enemy. Now, Jeanette and I do pros on steroids in a good way. So pros on steroids would be, hmm, that's awesome. <laughs> so that's really ultimately face to face. Now, I'm never going to kiss Satan, right? <laughs> yeah. But I will kiss her multiple times, right? <laughs> Pros, face to face, that I may be able to stand against, face to face, against the wiles of the devil. The wiles of the devil. Wow. Wiles. The Greek word, let me make sure I say it right, methodia. That's the wiles. Doesn't it sound scary? No, yeah, not, not to, yeah. He, yeah, Elisa's like, just give me a squirt gun. I will just go for the gates of hell right now, right? Amen. The wiles, methodia. It literally means to travel down one road one way. The wiles of the devil is he comes at everybody the same 
way. Now, I know you've heard me talk about this before, but man, stay around here. You're going to hear me talk about this a lot because it's how he comes. He comes against all of us the same way. And his, and his title, the devil, diabolos, it shows us how he comes. Dia means to penetrate through to the other side of something. Abolos, he penetrates through by throwing something blow after blow after blow after blow. We learn from other scriptures how Satan comes at all of us is he throws thoughts blow after blow after blow. How do thoughts, how, what does he use? Right? He will use our associations, the people we associate, he'll use them to throw thoughts. Right? The teaching you sit under, like what you're hearing, that, that could throw thoughts at you. From, he could use that. Right? There's some really good preachers that are, are not sticking with the word here. And they just don't know. But man, you got to run from that. Right? He, he'll use associations. He'll use teaching. Right? you got to be careful who you associate with. you got to be careful where you go. Realize that he's going to use people, circumstances. He'll use the world system. Right? What am I going to do? Gas is $5 a gallon. What am I going to do? Groceries have doubled. You know, pretty soon that'll start talking to you, and, and you as a Christian have to learn how to be strong in the Lord and talk back to it. Because God's your provider. You're here on assignment. You're not the funder of this deal. You're not the funder of this business trip. He is. Amen? And he meets all your needs on this business trip according to his riches and glory. Which if he were to manifest right now and talk to you, it would probably be a little higher than what you're living right now. Right? Could be. Could be a lot higher. But he makes a way where there's no way. The wiles of the devil. We have to look at this. So literally, this verse is saying, allow the whole armor of God to manifest upon you as you're continually drawing from his power. So in other words, you've got to deliberately do something to allow the armor of God to manifest upon you. This is what happens. Revelation knowledge of the truth of God's word literally will remove the deception of the devil which will remove that, that deception that he's trying, that feels like power. Revelation knowledge of God's word will remove it. You'll look like you're losing in life, and then you gain revelation knowledge that, wait a minute, he makes me the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. He can make a way where there is no way. Right? Amen. Joshua 1.5, no man will stand before you basically in the Hebrew, and block you from doing what I've called you to do because as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Well, if God says, hey, Josh, if as I was with Moses, so I will be with you, guess what? I, he's no respecter of persons. So as God was with Moses, as God was with Jesus, he will be with me. Amen. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why? Because he is with me, Right? He anoints my head with oil. Notice something comes upon me and my cup overflows. Do you see how all this fits from Genesis to maps? This is the word of God. Putting, the whole, putting on the whole armor of God, it causes you to be the aggressor in the fight. It gives you a superior position against the one road the one way the devil comes against you. God will literally lead you and go, okay, you start meditating on this scripture right here. And what he's doing is he's lifting you up because he knows the enemy's going to be coming at you two months from now in this area. And he'll keep you ahead of the enemy every time. That's what we're talking about.
So let's look, keep your finger in Ephesians. I want to fill in some blanks here. Let's go to Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Because it gives us another piece, another Greek word uh, uh, talking about his methods. We know he comes down one road, one way, to throw thoughts, to try to penetrate your mind. We know he's trying to do that so that he could steal, kill, and destroy. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says lest Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Devices, what is that? It's the Greek word noemata. Don't worry about the Greek words, that's just a Tony thing. But noemata, don't try to write noemata, whatever, right? <laughs> it's not, I, I'm not like some Italian guy going, it doesn't matter. No, it's noemata. Mata, right? So, so here we go. Noe Mata. That was like a Sicilian joke. I'm half Sicilian. You guys didn't get it. And it was not very good. So it wasn't a very good Sicilian joke, right? So Greek word Noe Mata. It means this. Tormenting and confusing mind games. Now every one of us go, oh, wow, been there. Tormenting and confusing mind games. Why isn't this working? I I'm, I'm, I'm think I'm doing everything, but it's getting worse. I just don't understand. All, he's playing mind, he's throwing thoughts. Look at this. Why is this not working? Hey, you're too tired. Don't, don't, you don't have to be in this word too much. You know, hey, you're really tired today. You don't need to go to church. You know what? What you don't know is you're going to hear something at church is going to be your answer. I remember once a young lady, she was working, she was in school uh, to be a nurse, and then she was working, and she got off super late, and she, she's like, oh man, it's like, it's like quarter to eight, and, but I'm going to church. She walked in at eight o'clock, and by 8.15, she had her answer. She was so excited. She's like, I am so glad I came because you dealt with something that I'm dealing with, right? I mean, it's, it's just... You never know, but Satan's always trying to keep you out. Don't let your flesh rule you. Be led by the Spirit of God. It's the scheming of the mind. This is the one way Satan comes against all of us. He doesn't kick down the door of your life to destroy you. He has no power to do that. He will throw thoughts. He tries to get you to yield to fear and, and open some doors or whatever. The reason why he comes against your mind is that he doesn't have access to your spirit. So he comes against your mind. And then we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 2. Look at chapter 10, verses 3 through verse 5. Now it's going to tell us about the weapons of our warfare. This, this completely fits with Ephesians chapter 6. It says here in verse 3 of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, for though we walk in the flesh, right? We all do, don't we? We walk in the flesh, but we do not war after the flesh. Say that with me. I don't war after the flesh. One meaning of this, say this with me, one meaning of this, meaning of this. is this. I don't, war I don't war after my flesh. After my flesh. See, we look at it and go, well, we don't war after the flesh. Okay, that means that people are never your problem, right? It means that your, your battle is not against people. There's something behind the people, right? And we know who that is. But you've got to understand, you don't, you're not trying to fight your flesh either. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, Romans 12, 2, that you present your body a living holy sacrifice. Not that you fight and fight and fight and fight. No, 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 no. You tell your body. Now, you're going to have to keep telling it over and over because your flesh will always, we all, we're always going to have to deal with that. But listen, who you are in Christ, 
and the authority and the power, when the power of the Holy Spirit is upon you and you're strong in the Lord, you can control your flesh. As a matter of fact, if you just renew your mind, you'll easily be able to control your flesh. you got to believe that. Because if you don't, you're going to think, well, no, this is just so hard. No, it's really not. What's really hard is you're trying to do this in yourself, and, and it's really hard to try to do something in yourself that, that actually, because you're kind of flesh-ruled, you don't want to do it. Right? Man, I just keep, you know, I, I, don't, I don't want to go sleep around, but, geez, you know, I just, I'm trying. No, no, if you'll renew your mind and grow spiritually, all of a sudden, that power from on high, the Holy Spirit will keep you. Don't try to keep yourself. You'll fail. And then, then he's right there with no emata, confusing mind games. Man, I've been trying to do this. I'm doing everything I could possibly do. And I'm messing up even more. we got to learn how to be strong in him. Remember, his yoke is easy. His burden is light in every area of your, of your life. For we, though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That, that Greek word means they're not of human origin. Our weapons are not of human origin. But they are mighty. Our weapons are mighty through God. To the pulling down. This word pulling down in the Greek means to the utter destruction of strongholds. And now it's going to tell us how it works. The weapons of our warfare are not of human origin. They are mighty through God to destroy strongholds. Where? In your mind. I want to encourage you, go back and watch or listen to that series on the renewing of the mind. Because Satan is going to throw thoughts to try to get you to take them. And how you take a thought is by speaking it. And if you keep speaking a thought... What's happening now is you are now building an imagination, a vain imagination in your mind. You're starting to build a movie in your mind of your life being lived some way contrary to the way that the word tells you you should live. And once that happens, and these, these principalities and powers that are set against you, they see you taking these thoughts. They see this so they'll keep they want to keep this behavior. All of your behavior comes out of your imagination. So if it's a vain imagination, your behavior is going to be vain. It's going to miss the mark. And what's going to happen is they'll want to keep that going, and they'll use people, places, circumstances, anything they could use, old friends calling you out of the blue, all this, whatever it is, to keep it going because ultimately they want you to build a stronghold, which literally that Greek word means a prison. And I'm here to tell you, if you got a stronghold today, if something is in your life and you just can't seem to overcome it, I've got good news for you. The anointing of God that is upon the word of God will destroy the stronghold. They're mighty through God to the pulling down. That means to the destruction of strongholds. Verse 5, this is how it works. Casting down imaginations. This, it's, it's casting down this Greek word, logismos. Logismos. It literally means the logical thinking of a deceived mind. Logical thinking. Be really careful with that. Well, if I do this, there is no possible way I can get here. That's logical, but that's not faith. Because I could tell you this, if God tells you to go here, you will get there. But it won't be logical. See, a vain imagination sounds very logical, but it's only because you've deceived your own mind. Casting down imaginations, casting down this logical thinking of a deceived mind. We don't walk by logic, we walk by faith. We walk in the light of God's word. Makes no sense to empty your bank account and sow. 
something to somebody or into the kingdom of God makes no sense. Right up until, oh my goodness, now I got 10 times the amount coming in and that's what God was trying to do all the time. It makes no sense to take a job that makes le pays less than more, right? And Except what you don't know is that job that pays less, you're going to meet somebody and it'll catapult you to where God wants you. God has this thing. Your path is already laid out. But if you're moved by the outside, you're, you're going to miss it. But I'm telling you, these weapons, the word of God in your heart, coming out of your mouth through Christ will pull down these strongholds. It'll cast down these imaginations. And then here it is. And every high thing... That means every lofty thing that's doing what? That's exalting itself against the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? That's his word. These thoughts exalt themselves over time against the knowledge of God. This tells us how subtle Satan is. Because the word exalt means something that slowly and progressively takes a place of preeminence in your life. There are detrimental thought processes that have been developed, that we've developed in ourselves by walking in the flesh that God wants to wean you off all of them. He's a loving father. He doesn't get down on you for the messed up thought processes. No, he, he knows. Listen, you can't do this on your own. You need me. We're created to work together. Let me come in with all of my power and strengthen you and manifest and tear these things down for you so that you can be who you are. All I'm hearing in my spirit over and over is awakening, awakening, awakening. It's time for the church to awaken. That's going to usher in a revival. That's going to bring in a harvest. We've got to awaken to this stuff. This is why we teach the word of God. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's what these weapons do. See, why am I saying this? Because the biggest, the biggest battle in your mind and in my mind is against these doubts and preconceived notions that the word of God is just not going to work for me this time. That's where, it, that's where it all funnels down. So brother or sister, you better just rely on what you know and stay safe. I did that for years. You know, you just kind of like, okay, I'll just kind of duck over here. Maybe you'll leave me alone. Then I'll duck over here. Maybe, no, 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 brother. He's going to keep coming. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The mere fact that you're ducking means he's seeking whom he may devour. Do you know he never goes after somebody who's not ducking? Right? Now, Satan's a killer. He'll always come against everybody, but he's really seeking the ones that are out, right? You heard the statement from T.L. Osborne, a great minister, right, who's went home to be with the Lord. Here it is, big, deep revelation. The banana that gets pulled away from the bunch is always the one that gets peeled. So don't let yourself, you big bunch of bananas, don't let yourself be pulled away from the bunch. I'm not either. I'm going to jump right in the middle of all you guys, right? But these preconceived notions that, man, what God says is just, it might not work for me this time. Because, you know, it really hasn't worked for me last time. And it didn't work for my friend. And it didn't, I mean, he'll bring all these, right? Believe God for something. You run into 25 people that had trouble in this area. You young ladies, get pregnant. Everybody, oh yeah, you know, my labor was 800 hours. And, the, you know, I mean, you're always going to hear this stuff. Right? So this, realize that Satan is dropping thoughts from the outside. He wants to, he wants to nurture those thoughts and water those thoughts. He wants you to start speaking them. Why? So he can control your mind. Because if he could control your mind, he's got you. 
The Bible says that persecution and affliction arises for the word's sake. Satan's just trying to separate you from the word. That the trial of your faith, which is more precious, your faith is what's on trial, not you. He, he gets you to let go of faith and there's nothing you can do, right? Thoughts from God come through our spirit to our mind. As we fellowship with God, intimate fellowship through meditating in his word. What happens now is the word of God, revelation from God's word, this armor that's manifesting will help you discern what is a good thought and what's not. If you were to study counterfeit money, if you were, if you were to, be, to locate counterfeit money, they don't have you sit in a room and look at counterfeit money all day. They have you look at the real money. And, and as you just study that, you will see a counterfeit. As you peer into the word of God, you, when, when he throws a thought that's not, that's not from the Lord, you will go, ugh. That's how come you'll be able to take every thought captive. See, deception happens when a person believes the lies that, that he throws. That's when you get deceived. So you got to keep the word in your mind. Amen? Well, I could, get, I could start going on here, but, you know, I think this is good for tonight. We'll, 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 we'll talk more about this next time. But, guys, the word of God, all through the epistles, teach you how to be strong in the Lord. In the Gospels, it, sh it shows you in the ministry of Jesus exactly how he was strong in the book of acts it shows you how how these disciples walked in the strength of god and then once you understand this principle you can see in the old testament abraham was strong in faith giving glory to god god literally changed his name changed his identity said listen if you could number the stars you'll number your seed if you could number the sand you could number your seed he helped him so he helped him be strong in the lord and abraham became fully persuaded that what god said he would do Amen. you see this strength joseph all that he went through he never let go of what god told him and it brought him out you see this over and over Daniel in a lion's den you see the same thing Shadrach Meshach and Abednego you see the same thing David going against Goliath you see the same thing over and over and over so we're going to look at these principles and you're going to learn how to really be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might amen